始めー Alright, another Sean Francis vlog. I kinda almost stopped making these because they don't get a ton of views. And then all of a sudden I get an email from somebody who's uh, been helped by one of these and I'm like... I don't even care about the views. If it's helping one kid or one adult or one parent, then I'm gonna keep making them. This one will actually, this one's actually really good. It'll help you not only with depression or anxiety stuff, but it'll help you with your sports psychology type stuff too. So let's talk about ants. <laughs> No, not those types of ants. Automatic negative thoughts. But Sean, why are thoughts so important? All right, so every thought you have produces a chemical. You know, your brain produces a chemical that determines how you feel. So you could have a feel-good chemical or a not feel-good chemical. Negative thoughts increase limbic system activity. And the limbic system is a part of your brain uh, that develops uh, thoughts and emotions. Let's, let's do this a little simpler. So... In your limbic system, you have the flight or fight response. So what happens in your flight or fight response or your sympathetic nervous system? Someone's trying to shoot you with a gun, you can have that flight or fight response and you just don't feel good. Like your muscles can get tense or your stomach stops functioning. You know, you can get an upset stomach. Your pupils dilate. Um, your throat might feel like it's closing off. These are all kind of due to what's happening in the limbic system. On the opposite side of that, the parasympathetic ner nervous system is also known as the rest and digest. Your heart rate drops, it slows down a little bit. You're more relaxed. So your saliva will increase good for kissing or not. I don't know if you like a sloppy kiss. You can feel like you can pee. <laughs> so the point I'm trying to make with all this are your thoughts are very powerful and your thoughts affect the way your brain works and your brain controls how your body works and how things are made like your cells. So the way you think can actually change the way your cells are working and produced and how they change and grow. And some scientists actually believe that a lot of negative thoughts can actually cause cancer because it has this negative effect on your body the whole time. It's just constantly getting beating up and it's tight and tense and stressed out. So the same idea with stress. If you have negative thoughts, you can get stressed and then boom. You just don't feel good and bad things can potentially happen. Why is this important? An automatic negative thought is a distortion of reality. The problem is people with Depression have, they're really good at using their imag imagination. If you think of a lot of famous people with depression, um, they're really good at sciencey things and thinking outside of the box. And they're really, really good at, like, there's a lot of actors with it too. They're just really creative. And um, their imagination is really good. But the problem is if you start believing these distortions or distorted realities in your brain, um, then you react to the world in a very, very different way. Let's talk about five distorted realities or five automatic negative thoughts. There's like 15 of them, but let's just do five for today. And uh, these are kind of the big ones. I would like to be very clear that everybody has these distorted realities or their ants, but um, people with depression again have these at a much higher level or more frequent. So the trick is being aware of them or so you can change the power that you give them. All right, so let's get started. Five ants. Number one, let's do filtering. So filtering is when you filter out the positives. You only focus on one side of the problem. An example would be you're in class and a teacher says, Hey, you did really good on that art project. But you know, if you changed this and this and this, it might make it just a little bit better. You don't focus on, I had a really good art project. All you focus on is, I suck and I didn't do this, this and this, so I'm a bad person. A healthy way of looking at it is having a balance. Knowing that, hey, there is a positive side of it. There is, you know, some constructive criticism. So. If you look at it, there's a little bit of negative things that you need to fix, and there's a little bit more, the positives are way higher. So you could look at that as a positive thing that happened. You know, and then there you go. You had a better thought and perspective on the whole situation. And let's do all or nothing. This is also called a, a black and white thinking. So this is where things are just right or wrong, or good or bad. You know, they don't have any middle. It's on very opposite extremes of the polar extreme, so there's no middle ground. It's very black or white. So if we use that art kind of situation again. Well, my art was either good or it sucked. There's an A or an F. There's no B, C, or D. There's no middle range. A new way of looking at it, a better perspective, was to take a full perspective of the whole entire situation. Look at the gray. The gray is always important, and actually they're 
you'll live in more gray of the world than you do in the blacks or whites. So always just be aware if you're thinking in extremes, either good or bad, black or white. All right, let's go to number three. This one's called mind reading. This usually happens in middle school or high school where you kind of assume everyone's thinking about you or talking about you or you just are guessing what they're thinking. I mean, I remember doing it myself. You think everybody's looking at you and talking about you and everything, everybody's judging all their negative things. They see that zit on your face or they don't like your shirt or they're making fun of the friends you have. And you know what? You don't know what's happening. That's the absolute truth. Unless you ask. Asking questions can be very helpful for uh, mind readers. So if you find yourself reading people's minds or just guessing what they're doing, ask. Ask questions. So if you want to know if somebody likes a zit on your face, be like, hey, you like my zit on my face? Or hey, you like this cool shirt? Or not a cool shirt? I don't know. What do you think about my shirt? And then you have the answers you're looking for. All right, we're on number four. Catastrophizing. All right, catastrophizing is when you overestimate the chance for disaster or expecting something to be unbearable or intolerable to happen. I think I'll, when I think of this one, I think of a lot of parents who uh, they send their kid off to their friend's house. Oh my god, my son's gonna die, or I can't let him swim, they're gonna drown, or <laughs> they can't skydive because they're gonna die. That one's from my mom, she doesn't like that one at all. A lot of people get this with public speaking. Um, so they might say something like, I'm gonna stutter all over my words and then everyone's gonna hate me and nobody's gonna like anything I do and everything's gonna suck. That's probably not what's gonna happen. You're gonna stutter over your words and no one's gonna think anything of it. Um, you can kind of understand that that's just one of the many possible things that can happen and you're looking at all the negative sides of things. So if you can look at the positive things like, Hey, your son might learn how to swim instead of drown. Or your son might skydive and find a new meaning and love for life. Maybe you might stutter over a couple words, no one's gonna care, or maybe you won't even stutter at all. There's gotta look in the gray. There's a lot more possibilities that could happen than just this really bad stuff. That's catastrophizing. All right, last but not least for today, I will do the other 10 down the road, possibly. But let's do emotional reasoning. That's when you take feelings as facts. Let's say you're like, I feel really ugly, so I must be ugly. No, you just, I don't know why you feel gross. Maybe you just didn't shower. And that's not gross because he showered this morning. He just didn't shower again at night or something like that. Or if, let's do a sports one. I got second place, but I feel like I failed, so I failed. No, you got second place. That's not failure. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's all about perspective and your perspective is distorted. So second place is still very, very good. So again, it's feelings being mistaken for facts and it's hard to look at the facts. But down the road, I'll teach you how to look at the facts better too. So these are all distorted thoughts, perceptions of reality that aren't really reality. It's just ways to kind of get stuck in this automatic negative thoughts and the hard part with these is that they're automatic they just happen you know you're not thinking about it and then make it happen so the first step very first step and this is all I challenge you to do right now is just be aware that it's happening if you know that it's happening then you can kind of stop like let's do one for uh, mind reading you can stop be like okay that person doesn't think I look stupid or maybe they do I don't know the answer but I already feel better because if you have that, that person thinks I look stupid. You don't really know. So by taking it one step back, you already get away from the negative side of the polar extreme and you get more into the gray area. And when you're in the gray, things seem to happen a lot better. So you can start to think like, I'm gonna ask them if they think I look stupid. And then you can ask them and if they say no, then it's a no. And if they say yes, then maybe you look stupid, but at least you have the answer. <laughs> So that's kind of how it goes. So like I always say in these, if you guys are suffering from depression or anxiety or anything like that, um, I am here. Hit my email is in the description below. If you need to get a hold of me, I like to say I'm pretty good at responding to emails um, and I will be there to help you. And if I don't have an answer and I can't help you, I will point you in the right direction. And I've been doing this for like 20 years, so I have a lot of directions I could point you. And depression is a stigma, so it's not bad to talk about it. It's just like if somebody fell into a hole, and uh, you'd probably help them out of that hole. That's how depression should be. Instead of, right now it seems to be like if you see somebody in a hole, they walk by on be Like, what an idiot for falling in the hole. That's not very cool. You know, I don't agree with that. That's why I'm talking about it a lot and hopefully trying to make some changes. Next week, I'll try and make a pole vault vlog or, you know, a question and answers vlog. I have no idea. We'll see what I come or try and do. I got a new computer, so I got to hook it up and get all the software on it so I can do way cooler things like make fire come out of my hands. kind of want to be able to do that. Thanks for watching. Share these with people who might, who you think they might be able to help. All right. Love you guys. Bye. Boop. Let's use this graph as an example. 
Your thoughts affect your feelings and behavior. Your feelings affect your thoughts and behavior. Your actions or behavior affect your thoughts and your feelings. So it creates this perfect circle. I hate this graph because it only goes one way. Let's use this triangle instead because I like triangles more. It creates a perfect triangle. Where your thoughts affect your feelings, your feelings affect your hips, and your hips. But Chalman, it doesn't make any sense. I don't even know what you're talking about. Can you give me some examples?